Let's pray. Father, we come together tonight and we celebrate every graduate, God, and all of their accomplishments, but we want to take just a moment, Lord, to, uh, to acknowledge you, Lord, and to, to show our thankfulness, God, for this season of our lives and this time we've had here at Lee. Father, we thank you for Lee and the, the faculty and staff here, God, who not only impart knowledge, God, but who invest their lives to make a difference in all of ours. God, I just pray and I thank you for, for every trial, God, and for every opportunity we've had while we've been here. Lord, as you've used it to mold us, to shape us, and to lead us into the kind of men and women that you're calling us to be. And Lord, I just thank you that above all, Lord, you've been faithful to us in our time here, that you've been with us. And I pray as we go from here, we would remember that you are always with us. Now let us honor you with the rest of the service, God, and with the rest of our lives and all we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the 2014 commencement. Good to see everybody here, parents, grandparents, and friends and family. If you would turn in your bulletin, please, we're going to sing our first hymn, Joy to the World. We're going to sing the first, second, and fourth verse. Thank you very much, Lucas. Lucas is a music major, and uh, the invocation was prayed by Adam Wright, who's a business administration major. They're both from right here in Cleveland, Tennessee. Thank you, guys. And thank you for being here on this really cool winter night, such a wonderful uh, crowd for our commissioning service. Now, commencement is a, is a big event, and uh, commencement morning is one of those happy occasions when families uh, and friends come together to celebrate this accomplishment with uh, their graduates. Uh, we, we, we will look forward to that occasion, but on the night before commencement here at Lee, it's our tradition to meet together and not talk to the students, but hear from the students. And uh, it's one of those occasions that we most look forward to, uh, not just in the commencement weekend, but in the entire school calendar. And I'm so pleased you're here uh, to be a part of this. So we're going to hear uh, from seven students now, th six of whom will be offering reflections on their time at Lee and one of whom will be providing music. And then after we've done that, we'll come back to 
uh, give Bibles to our graduates, and then uh, after the benediction, we hope all of you will join us just down the lower pedestrian mall here uh, at the Paul Dana Walker Arena for hors d'oeuvres and a time to meet. And uh, we, we want to introduce these students to you and tell you that we've told them to be personal, be autobiographical, tell us your story. Because we believe that in the aggregate of many small stories, the Lee University experience emerges. And uh, these six students have been invited to tell us a little about what it has been like for them to be a part of the Lee student family over these uh, last several years. First, we're gonna hear from Chad Turner. Chad, Chad is from Gillettsville, Tennessee. He's a digital media studies major. He might tell you what that is. Uh, after, after Chad comes Danielle Marakin from Toledo, Ohio, who's a psychology major. And then Nathan Ramsey. Nathan is from Windsor, Connecticut, and is a business management major. After those three speakers, we're going to enjoy music brought to us by Maddie Taylor. Maddie is from Milan, Tennessee, and she's a music vocal emphasis major and a double major in anthropology. Then three more speakers. Emily Evers from Blackshear, Georgia, another anthropology major. Doug Westover from Jasper, Georgia, who's majoring in human development and business. And finally, Madeline Ryan from Denver, North Carolina, a public relations major. I'm really looking forward to hearing what these students have to offer. So let's get started, Chad. First of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Khan for the opportunity to share with you guys. Um, I'm sure if you met me before today, he would reconsider the offer. Uh, but you're stuck with me now, and we're gonna make the most of it. Um, I've been threatened, I mean encouraged, to keep this under five minutes, and so I'm gonna try my best to uh, do that. Uh, like I said, I'm Chad Turner. I'm a digital media studies uh, almost graduate from around Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I actually have a lot to live up to at this graduation because my high school graduation, I sang uh, Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror, um, and I'm gonna spare you, uh, so consider yourself blessed. Uh, I actually, I wanted to eventually become a music major here at Lee. That's what Lee's kind of known for. But after living with a music major my freshman year uh, and staying up with them until 2.30 or 3 in the morning most nights doing homework, I quickly decided I was going to avoid that at all costs. Someone told me that digital media was actually the lazy way out uh, for music majors and that sounded like a perfect fit for me, uh, lazy way out. And but after getting to the bulk of classes, I really found something that, that I enjoyed doing, and that's photography. Uh, I learned a lot about photography from Mr. Kilpatrick, but most importantly, I learned that we should always strive to make a difference with what we do. Um, and actually, speaking of photography, my roommate, Nathan Bivens, is in the front row. And uh, it, what I like about photography is nobody's better than the other person. It's just everybody's different interpretation, and it's, to me, it's kind of like a clear reflection of the body of Christ. And uh, Actually, speaking to Nathan, we've done a few weddings together, so if you're looking for a photographer, <laughs> you should check out chadturnerphotography.com. That's chadturnerphotography.com. <laughs> uh, but I'm rambling. I make my, no mom, my mom nervous when I ramble, so I'm sorry. Uh, she's praying in the back, if you can hear her. Uh, I came to Lee very single, uh, and I was very ready to change that, actually. Um, my freshman RA, John Crawford, he would stay up with me some nights until 4 a.m. talking about life's biggest worries, like, does Sally like me or does she just like the idea of me? Like, and frankly, I still don't even know, so <laughs> it didn't even help. Uh, eventually, I wised up and realized college is about a lot more than girls, um, and my mom was thrilled to hear that. Uh, I even told God, I said, you know what, God, if I'm supposed to be single for the rest of my life, like, I'd be okay with that. Like, I would carry that cross. That would be so great. <laughs> and then that next summer, I ended up meeting a girl, and that was an awkward conversation between the Lord and I, saying, like, I know I said that, and I meant it, God, but, like, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so, luckily for me, that girl's now my fiance, and me and Becca are getting married on July 11th, uh, next summer, and I'm super excited. I hope she's excited. Uh, <laughs> She isn't able to be here today. She'll be here tomorrow. Her mom is actually graduating from nursing school. Um, and so even before we get married, the in-laws are getting in the way of everything. <laughs> and I'll, I'll pay for that one later. It's fun. <laughs> but... <laughs> Lee wouldn't be the same without the guidance, encouragement, and the constant teasing by Dr. Mike Hayes. Uh, I met Mike at uh, Summer Honors uh, before I got here to Lee, and then I was in his gateway class freshman year. And then uh, I ended up working for him the very next semester, my second semester, until now. Uh, I also worked with him as the student coordinator of the Great Strides 5K here on campus. And uh, then everything kind of came full circle and I was his peer leader for his gateway class again this semester. Um, and I'm just thankful that Mike's seen me uh, for what I could be and not necessarily as I am uh, because he reminds me how much of an idiot I am today. <laughs> so thank you. And uh, but uh, I joined uh, TKO, a Greek club on campus. There are actually most of the ushers here. So all the people that told you you can't sit down uh, down here and had to go to the balcony, uh, they're really nice guys, I promise. But I was also an RA, uh, and I learned to love people and serve people without the expectation of being loved back, which is what I feel we're supposed to do as Christians. Uh, all this to say, uh, my time at Lee isn't defined by Lee itself, but by the people that I've met, the friends, the faculty, the professors. Uh, and lastly, thank you, Mom and Dad, for uh, your guidance and discipline. Thank you, Cody, my brother, for giving me such an unrealistically high expectation when I got here. Uh, Thank you, Becca, even if, though you're not here, uh, for uh, showing me how to love people. And I uh, thank you to my grandparents for giving me money so I didn't starve. So uh, thank you all. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot my step stool at home. <laughs> um, good evening, my name is Danielle Marroquin, and it is such an honor to share my Lee experience with you this evening. In all honesty, Lee was not my first choice for college, simply because my brothers graduated from Lee and I'm the youngest child, so I wanted to be different. However, my brother Adam talked me into visiting for Lee Day and asked me to give it a try. From the second I set foot onto campus, I knew that this is where God wanted me to be. And I could feel a tug on my heart that this is where I belonged. As the weekend went on, I started to fall more and more in love with Lee and had a change of heart about wanting to be different from my brothers. Lee University sucked me in by their phenomenal music, Southern hospitality, and godly roots. When the weekend was over, I quickly applied to Lee and couldn't wait to start the next chapter of my life in Cleveland, Tennessee. In August 2010, I arrived here and made it my home for the next four years. At first, I was overwhelmed by how many students and families were on campus during move-in day, but as I looked around, I started to become more and more excited about starting a new chapter in my life. The first couple of days before classes, I started, to stu I'm sorry. I started to experience a little bit of culture shock. I'm from Northern Ohio, so I'm not used to hearing people say, oh, bless your heart, to, <laughs> to me several times a day. I'm not used to hearing people say y'all instead of you guys. And I'm not used to people wearing camo even if they're not going hunting. <laughs> Although some of these things made me laugh, it made me fall more in love with my new home away from home. In my opinion, the first semester of your college career, you begin to learn a lot about yourself and how to take on college classes. I was encouraged to set goals for myself that would help me succeed throughout the semester. My first goal was to get good grades. My second goal was to get involved with campus life. And my last goal was to make lifelong friendships and have an unforgettable college experience. From that day forward, I promised myself that I would achieve these goals by the end of my college career. As my first semester at Lee came to an end, I had successfully achieved my first goal. Because of the professors I had, I was able to earn the grades that I had hoped for. Every professor at Lee truly has a heart for teaching and goes out of their way to help their students become successful in their classes. Before every class, our professors start off with a devotion, ask for prayer requests, and then they pray for us. How good is it to have professors and students join together in unity and pray for one another? 
As I came back from my second semester of college, I decided that I wanted to achieve my second goal and get involved in campus life. I noticed the Greek community on campus and I figured I'd give it a try. I went to a few rush parties and tried to get a feel for which girls club was best suited for me. After getting to know the girls in Delta Zeta Ta, I decided that I, that was the one I wanted to rush. I made the commitment to rush in the fall of 2011. I got a phone call and an invitation from the lovely ladies of Delta Zeta Ta asking me to be a part of this amazing sisterhood, and I am so thankful that they chose me. At the end of my first semester in DZT, I had gotten an unexpected call from my parents telling me that my grandma had gone to be with the Lord and I needed to come home for the funeral. This was the first time I had ever lost someone close to me. And since I'm never one to wear emotions on my sleeve, I didn't tell anyone what happened, but somehow DZT found out. Even though it was the week before finals and everyone had studying to do, they still found time to text me, to call me, to pray for me, and to check, me, check up on me every day. I had never felt so much love and compassion from a group of girls before. I was amazed by how I'd only known most of them for four short months and how they showed me what sisterhood truly means. They got me through a very difficult time in my life, and I promised myself that I would try to give back to the club as much as I could. Now that my seven semesters in DZT has come to an end, I am honored and thankful to have given, been given the opportunity to give back to DZT through being president for the entire year of 2014. Through DZT, I have become a better person spiritually, academically, and socially. It is because of the university's culture and opportunities that I've learned so much about myself and have found more than just lifelong friends, I've found family. As my four years of college life and activities are coming to an end, I'm reminded of everyone who has helped me along the way. All of my professors have been encouraging to me and have taken the time out of their busy schedules to pour into my life, specifically Tanya Cook and Sarah Ortega Higgs. I want to thank you both for your advice, your encouragement, and your prayers throughout the semester. I can proudly say that I've achieved all three of my goals that I set for myself since freshman year, and I look forward to setting new goals for myself at the beginning of this new chapter in my life. Thank you. I'd like to thank Dr. Khan for the opportunity to speak today. We are blessed to be a blessing. Two sage women, one that I've known my entire life, and the other I got the opportunity to work with at Lee, both told me the same thing. When you leave a place, leave it better than the way that you met it. Arriving at Lee, having lived in the North was a little different, just like Danielle. People in the South still say good morning. It happens up North, but just not as often. They tend to greet you with a hug instead of a handshake, which was hard to get used to. And people have a little bit of an accent, which is all a part of the Southern charm. From Chick-fil-A to sweet tea, I have grown to love the South. <laughs> At Lee, I was, I was not only enriched intellectually, but also socially and spiritually. Whether it was the weekly Bible studies with the guys of the Bering, or, the cha or chapel every Tuesday and Thursday, and even service hours. It has all helped to mature me spiritually. My social life basically was the evangelistic singers. As president these past few years, there are many hospital visits, long nights of encouraging fellow choir members, and hundreds of miles put on my car for every EVS activity. I've had some awesome times with my EVS family, from the game nights to all the different ministry opportunities, and yes, even the 18 hour drive in the snow from Connecticut, I've enjoyed it all. Even, even though I had, at times it got difficult, I would not trade it for anything because it taught me to care for others over myself. And even at your lowest, you can always help someone else. I cannot talk, I cannot talk about EVS without mentioning the giant, Miss Gloria Scott Richmond. She has truly impacted my life greatly because of her unwavering standard of excellence and her compassionate, caring heart. It has changed my life. Thank you also to the soon to be Miss Dr. Hart, who helped, has mentored me these past few years. And the main reason I am gainfully employed as she is the resume expert. 
Furthermore, I cannot forget to thank my pastor, Bernie Miller, my New Covenant family, and the Yarbroughs for allowing me to lead in worship from Sunday to Sunday. It has been an incredible journey these, past, these last three, three years, and I thank you for pouring into my life. The brotherhood that has developed from participating in BOSS, the men's step team here at Lee, has taught me discipline as well as improved my coordination. I also had the opportunity to participate in Yamoja, the black student union here at Lee. For, from the formal meetings of a great intellectual discussion to the informal meetings in Tharp Hall, where we crammed in to watch the TV show, The Game, which one night led to the gazebo experience, where we sang Negro spirituals and God touched us in an incredible way. During my time at Lee, I've been afforded the opportunity to meet people from different countries, ethnic groups, cultural backgrounds, and this has stirred a passion to see God's kingdom fulfilled here on earth. So this semester, I put together the Help Me Be Sensitive event, which was a step to help move our school more toward diversity. I cannot neglect to mention the once in a lifetime opportunity afforded to me by this school to sing at the inauguration with the festival choir. That moment gave me a greater appreciation for this country. I've found that as you attempt to make an impact on a place, the place cannot help but make an impact on you. Thank you to Dr. Thompson for the 31 random facts, thoughts. I've already put them to good use in my new job. And shout out to my policy group, you guys are amazing. The social experiences has made me more comfortable with being uncomfortable with my quirky self. I have done many things at Lee that I've said I would never do, like hiking or sleeping in the mountains in the rain. Thank you to my family because although you were hundreds of miles away, you always called at the right times with prayers and words of encouragement that helped me bring me, bring me through this time. My college experience at Lee has become family tradition. My father and mother both graduated from Lee. And without co coercion, my sister graduated from Lee. And my brother and I are graduating from th this university as well. There are many challenges, whether academic, social, or spiritual, that I face while at Lee. But the faculty, staff, and, and staff genuinely seek to cultivate each student. As I leave, I know I have been prepared to be the best friend, businessman, son, Christian I can possibly be because of the lessons this school has taught me. Hopefully, I put the advice of the two sage women to good use that, help that, that helped this university in some small way because it is sure it changed my life. Flowered with the snows upon a winter. 
My experience at Lee was a quiet one. I came in as a freshman anthropology major, not knowing what I was getting myself into. To be honest, I don't remember actually having a reason for choosing anthropology. There was no sign from the heavens, it just simply came second alphabetically on Lee's list of majors. And I'm sure my professors feel very proud right now. But I did some research on it and I wrote it down as my major option four and a half years ago. To reassure all, I would not go back on that decision if I had it to do all over again. Anthropology fell in so perfectly with what I was searching for in my life. It has helped develop my understanding of the world in a way that I could never have imagined. As Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. once said, a mind that is stretched by a new experience can never go back to its old dimensions. My experiences at Lee have stretched far beyond this campus. I've traveled to Belize and touched pre-Columbus American history. I was able to sit and talk with Anna, a Mayan woman who housed us and cooked our dinner for an evening. I, was, I listened to Florenzio, a famous Belizean musician, play his handmade violin as a personal concert on his front covered porch. And I watched as some Garifuna boys showed us how to fish with a net from shore. I've been able to participate in four archaeology field school seasons from Tennessee all the way to Colorado. Being able to dig up and record artifacts that are thousands of years old almost made up for being covered head to toe in dirt and other questionable material. Of course, this was all while Dirksen strategically found a large rock to take a nap under. But in all seriousness, these field seasons have been some of the most educational and have allowed me to take, make acquaintances that otherwise would not have been possible. I have indeed been afforded great opportunities, but these opportunities wouldn't be what they were had it not been for my professors. I am so very thankful for professors like Wheeler, Jones, and Dirksen, who practice throat singing every anthropology club meeting, who have an affinity for country music that I'm pretty sure no one's ever heard of, and who think it's okay to go skipping along the Grand Canyon, possibly to your death, just simply to get a perfect photo. I enjoy learning from, from my professors in the classroom, so being able to work with them out in the field for me was priceless. 
From these excavations and trips have come some of my most cherished and valued memories. If you've known me for any period of time, you know that I am an introvert. So trying to find a club at Lee that didn't take me out of my comfort zone was slim to none. But I adjusted accordingly. I joined Big Pal Little Pal my sophomore year and eventually became its treasurer my junior. This was where I found out firsthand that sometimes you can talk until you're blue in the face, but your argument doesn't make a difference if you haven't considered the variation in lifestyles between you and the other person. Because let's face it, no matter how many times you try and tell a 13-year-old that her, doing her homework is fun, she will never be as enthusiastic about it as you would like she would for her to. But working with a preteen tested my limits, and it forced me to address my own mindset. I realized I am a bit of a perfectionist, and sometimes I just need to let it go. But all in all, she brought me a new perspective into my own life that I will always value. While developing relationships in Big Pal Little Pal, I also found friendships in my coworkers at the Student Financial Services here on campus. I had wonderful mentors who showed me on a daily basis the balance between being kind and standing fixed in your position. I cannot tell you how wonderfully poised they were when we discovered that the entire computer system was down at registration. They roll with the punches, they work as a unified group, and they get the job done. This camaraderie built here will be the standard by which I measure future working relationships. Aside from all of my campus and academic involvements, there are a few special people in my life that if they were not there, I would most certainly not have accomplished what I have today. My mom. She has handled all of the emotions, all of the late night calls because I felt like a failure at life, and all of the notions for adventure that she went along with because she knew very well that Emily Evers would never draw any more attention to herself than necessary. And yet here I am standing in front of hundreds of people. God has a sense of humor. <laughs> My dad. I like to call him my human shield. He's been a police officer, a soldier, and an instructor. But more than all of that, he has seamlessly been the father, the husband, and the protector of our family. He has given me the courage to accomplish tasks that I didn't think possible, giving me the opportunity to tell my own stories. My brother and my sister are also extremely large parts of my life. They are my best friends and my closest confidants. We are part of the few who knew what it was like to grow up in our large, rowdy, and wonderfully caring family. As for the rest of our clan, my aunts, uncles, cousins, and my wonderful grandparents, you can't find any family like us. And by the way, happy birthday, Granny. Finally, my, my friends, especially those who have stuck it out with me since freshman year, from our late night runs for coffee and a pastry at Jasmine's before it was Subway, to our current Sunday night TV show tradition, we definitely danced to our own tune and somehow we've made it to graduation. In any case, God has blessed me with experiences and people I will never forget. I will take them with me wherever I go. And as quoted by Dr. Seuss, oh, the places we shall go. Thank you. All right, so they told me that when I come up here, I should do three things. And that is relax, which is a lot easier said than done that I should take a deep breath, so let's all just do that. And then they said that I should just stare at you for like 15 seconds and smile. But honestly, this is quite terrifying. Um, but no, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, when I came to Lee four years ago, I came here and I didn't know a single soul. Uh, I, I didn't know anybody here. And uh, my parents, after they helped me move in and get comfortable in the dorm, dropped me off at Battle O'Bannon. And I stood there and I watched the car drive away. And actually, I remember my mom in the passenger side and both hands and face against the window <laughs> as the car drove down the street. I stood there alone and I looked at campus and I stared at something that I could only describe as new, unfamiliar, scary, and anything but home. And you know, it's kind of funny because now I find myself in the same spot, only this time the roles are reversed and I'm staring into the world and I can only describe it as new, unfamiliar, scary, and anything but home. My time at Lee has gone by very much how I think the rest of my life will go by. I've had my ups and downs, my seasons of reaping and sowing, my good times and my bad times, 
And just like life, as I'm sure all of you here have found out, there are very few things here that have gone according to plan. But if I'm going to tell you my story about Lee, <clears throat> I'm going to need to use a phrase that we don't hear as much as we need and we don't say as much as we should. And for some of you, it'll be the first time that you've even heard this phrase today. But that phrase is simply, thank you. I'm going to tell my story in the form of some very overdue thank yous. Thank you, Res Life, for finally cracking me out of my shell freshman year and for teaching me that, like opposite of an ancient city that you would read about in the Bible, not having walls isn't a sign of weakness. Thank you, Dr. Eosia, wherever you are in the crowd, for teaching me the value of a teachable moment. I have not forgotten that lesson. Thank you, Upsilon XE, for showing me that when someone asks for my tunic, how to give them my coat also. Thank you, cross-cultural trip to India for two things. First, how to survive in 104 degree weather. And for secondly, for teaching me that true courage isn't doing something with the absence of fear, but true courage is doing something despite the presence of fear. And thank you, Jimmy Harper and Fajoy Johnson for showing me what a true, genuine, and authentic life really looks like. Thank you, Delta Zeta Ta, for believing in me when I did not even believe in myself. And thank you, Dr. Bill Cam, for being an example to all young men who wish to be godly men. And finally, the biggest thank you of all belongs to Lee University for turning a place I viewed as so unfamiliar and scary into a place that is so hard to leave. There's one lesson that I have learned here that I value more than most, and you can't read about it in a textbook, and you can't look it up online on a peer-reviewed article, which I know we all love to read and we will dearly miss. But there is no greater way to experience life than to simply turn to the person sitting next to you and ask, what can I do for you? Because that same day, four years ago, where my parents dropped me off, that same question was asked to me. And I think because of Lee, I'm going to be asking that question to other people for a very long time to come. And I'm very, very much okay with that. Thank you. I had been at Lee one other time before visiting on a frontline day in 2010. The first time was on a family trip to visit my dad's business friend, the acclaimed Mr. Danny Murray, when I was in the second grade. I only remember a few things about that trip. I got a free t-shirt, which was only the beginning of my vast collection. I met the voices of Lee, and I vowed in all of my second grade wisdom that I would never go to this school. I thought I knew what I wanted at the ripe old age of eight, but I like to think that God was chuckling to himself thinking, Madeline, just hold on. My whole time at Lee University has been highlighted by unpredictable opportunities that have allowed me to see that God knows what I need far better than I do. During my senior year of high school, I clearly remember telling my parents that I wanted to look at Lee again. I guess I was rethinking my bold declaration of before, so we came to Frontline and my parents fell instantly in love. It took me a little longer, but looking back, I honestly have never been more sure of a decision in my entire life. It has been nothing like I expected, but everything that I needed. I came to Lee as a frightened freshman who knew no one. I started as a pre-med major, who yet again was so sure that I knew what I wanted. Fast forward to my semester of babysitting test tubes of fruit flies, and I discovered that, hey, maybe I was wrong again. <laughs> my science classes were great and my professors were outstanding, but I knew pretty quickly that wasn't the right fit for me. So one day, I found myself in Dr. Melton's office with millions of questions and no answers. I had vowed to never be that person to change their major, and there I was at the brink of the biggest crisis of my life, or so I thought. 
Dr. Melton patiently listened to all of my fears and concerns, interests and strengths. Then he looked right at me and said, you should study public relations. I'd never heard of that. <laughs> but I immediately met with Dr. Silverman and decided to do the unthinkable. I took the plunge and now, after so many classes and more group projects than I can begin to count, um, I can say with full confidence that PR was the best track for me. Working on campus was another thing that I was just so sure I wanted to do, but I didn't know just how impactful it would be or where I would find my place. On my 19th birthday, I received a phone call from the admissions office offering me a spot on A-Force. As silly as it sounds, I had always wanted to be a tour guide um, at whatever college I chose. The pink cardigans I saw the girls wearing were just an added bonus. Except, sadly, I never got a pink cardigan because they changed the uniform the next semester. <laughs> but thankfully, I still love getting to talk with prospective families about why I love Lee so much. Frontline Fridays have come full circle for me. And this semester, I was even able to show my youngest sister around while wearing my burgundy cardigan, which is still okay. My sophomore RA told me that I had to peer lead for Pastor Jimmy Harper, and I'm so glad I took her advice. Pastor Jimmy became the campus father I never had, and I really hope he's tweeting this moment right now. Oh, yay. <laughs> there it is. We didn't plan that. <laughs> My two gateway classes of freshman students gave me the opportunity to look at Lee with fresh eyes and fall in love with it all over again. This semester, I worked as the U Church intern, a job that perfectly combined my passions for event planning and music, but one that I did not plan on ever being able to have. Thank you, Josh York and Joyce Lane, for showing me that this is truly what I want to do when I grow up, which I guess is now. <laughs> But fear not, I did not just work the whole time I've been at school. I was also able to find community in unexpected places. I joined a Greek club, which was definitely not part of my plan. I had no idea what those were, and I've given up trying to explain how they work to family and friends outside of Lee. But Omega Alpha Phi was one of the best decisions I've ever made. They truly became my home away from home. I've been able to hold leadership positions, organize events, and welcome new friendships that I may not have had otherwise. Like many of you sitting here tonight, my journey was not always smooth sailing. But once I learned that my Lee's story did not have to look like anyone else's, college became fun. When I understood that I had the freedom to study what I wanted and be involved where I wanted, even if it was not part of my original plan, this journey became my own. As scary as graduation has seemed, I know that these same truths apply beyond this chapter. It's been bittersweet all semester to think about this day but I can say with confidence that this was the place for me. Looking back, these past three and a half years have looked nothing like I anticipated. They've been better than that. Through Lee, I've been stretched more than I ever thought possible, been pushed to explore my talents and passions, and given opportunities beyond what I could have ever dreamed. I will not soon forget these memories, nor will I ever forget these people. Thank you, Lee, for becoming my home. I'm so glad that my second grade self was proven wrong. Thank you. Thank you so much for all those reflections. Graduates, I look out at you, many of you I know and many I don't, but I see such a bright future, so much potential, so many places where God has used things here at Lee to prepare you for something truly exceptional, something really great as you go from here. We're glad we've been a part of this with you. Those of us who work here, my friends and colleagues on the faculty, on, seated on both sides of you and administrators on the stage and all the staff members who aren't here tonight. And we don't work here just because it's a job. We work here because we want to share this journey with you and for the last few years, we have shared it together. And as you leave here, we're going to give you a diploma tomorrow morning. Of course, that's the big moment. The diploma, you can frame it and hang on a wall and it reminds you and tells the world that you earned a college degree. Tonight, we're going to give you something quite different. It's a Bible. Most of you have many Bibles. 
Most of you have been given Bibles at some moment in your life before now. But we're not giving you this Bible because it's a souvenir or a memento of your commencement weekend. We're giving it to you as a symbol and a reminder that through all of your life, wherever it takes you, when everything else fails, you can stand on and count on the Word of God. We're giving you this Bible because we believe it's more than just an ancient text. It's more than just a wise book. We believe it is the voice of God to us. And we take great pleasure in giving you your diploma tomorrow, but we take great pleasure in giving you tonight this copy of God's Word. Now, it's probably the only thing at Lee you'll ever get that's actually free. <laughs> and, it, and it has your name on it. Or if not yours, someone's. <laughs> We've embossed your name on the front of it. We're going to start at the beginning. Nathan, right? We're going to start at the beginning. Somewhere out here, we'll, be, we'll start off right. Uh, and I hope we'll go all the way to end, my end. It is my prayer, it's my hope that everyone will get your, your, actually your own Bible. But if you don't, do not panic, don't freak out. It's God's way of helping you meet a new friend. <laughs> We'd like for you to come forward and as you move across the stage, you're gonna be given these Bibles by our campus pastor, Dr. Jimmy Harper, and our Dean of Students, Alan McClung. And after you've all got back to your seats, I'll ask you to stand and read with me a text that I've marked in the front of your Bible. God bless you as you come. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Thomas. That's beautiful. Now, how many of you didn't get the right Bible? Raise your hand, please. Oh, boy. Okay, we're all going to line up and do this again. <laughs> well, take the Bible you have and turn it, please, to page 1067. If you're a graduate student, that would be page 953 to Ephesians 3, 16 to 19. I took this occasion to sign my name in the front of your Bible and, and the date and also this scripture text. It's a part of a famous prayer of the Apostle Paul to his spiritual sons and daughters in Ephesus. And as our final part of this service tonight, I'd like us to read that part of that prayer together as a common prayer as we go from here beginning in verse 16 of Ephesians 3. Will you pr uh, read with me, please? I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen. And may it be true in your lives. Will you stand please in the rest of the audience for our benediction? Let me remind you that we welcome you and be looking for you right down the Ped Mall, the Paul Dana Walker Arena. Lots of goodies over there and the faster you move, the warmer you'll be. And now for the benediction, Rachel Mura, an interdisciplinary studies major from Augusta, Georgia. Rachel. Let us pray. Jesus, we have so much to be thankful for today. First and foremost, thank you for your unending love and for your endless blessings, for our family and for our friends that have shown us constant support and encouragement, for Lee University and for all of our professors and our mentors that have worked so hard to prepare us for our future. You promise us in your word that you will take us by our hand and that you will guide our every step. In Isaiah 42, you remind us that you have called each of us for a righteous purpose and you declare that you will make the rough places into level ground. Our prayer today, Father, is that you would go before us and that you would pave the way. As we head into the unknown, we ask that you would ordain each of our steps and that you would provide us with direction and with a sense of purpose. As we trust in you, please give us opportunities to change lives and to impact others for you and for your kingdom. And just as Paul prayed in Corinthians, put us on display, Lord, for you, so that every place that we go, we may leave behind the scent of knowing you. As we enter into this new phase of life, anoint us with courage, bless us with peace, and most of all, multiply our faith. We love you, Jesus, and we look to you in all things. And in your beautiful name we pray, amen. If you will join me in the reciting of our college benediction, and let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be still in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. God bless.